Welcome everyone. My name is Zach Cooper. I'm the National Sales Manager for Zoller Pump Company. We appreciate you joining us today for our Backup Systems Overview webinar. A couple housekeeping items I want to touch on are, uh, before we get started, just a few details. Please note that the email address written below the title on your screen. If you should have any questions after we wrap up, make sure you send any questions to webinars at zoller.com and we'll be sure to get back with you. With that being said, Again, I'm Zach Cooper, the National Sales Manager of Solid Pump Company. Been with the company for uh, going on 13 years. Kind of got started in technical support. I always make the joke with folks is uh, before coming to Zoller, I didn't really know much about pumps before. Like any other 12 or 13 year old boy, you know, I, I thought I had the world figured out and I did what, what most of those boys do and, and gained my independence by moving into my parents' basement. So when it rained and that sump pump was going on and off, it kept me up at night. So that was kind of all I knew about a sump pump or what a pump did at that point before coming to the company. Uh, again, started technical support, learned to troubleshoot systems and size proper pumps for applications and um, did that for a few years. And then I secured a, a position in sales and I covered a couple of different territories for a number of years and then took over the national sales manager position. I guess it's been about a year and a half ago. So it's been a great company to work for, opened a lot of opportunities for me and glad to be here and glad to have you all here today. With that being said, that's a little bit about me and kind of like to get into the, uh, the topic at hand. So again, we're talking about backup systems and protection and backup systems overview. So when we talk about backup systems and protection, a couple of things we're gonna go over today in the presentation are you know, what is backup protection? A lot of times, you know, Zoller has done so well on the sump pump side of the business for so long that when we talk about backup protection, most folks just associate that with some sort of, maybe it's a, a backup pump for, for a sump pump or something like that, but there's a lot more to backup protection and there's a lot of different uh, applications that a form of backup protection can be used in. Also, we're gonna touch on who can benefit from backup protection. So whether it's a contractor or a homeowner or a facility maintenance person, who can benefit from having backup protection? What forms of backup protection are there? So when we talk about that, whether it's sump, sewage, or fluent, all those applications can utilize some sort of backup system or backup protection. Not all applications can use the same type of products. We'll cover a variety of different things from pumps to alarms to panels and controls. And then we want to talk about where they're used. Again, the different applications, whether it be sump, effluent, or sewage. And also want to touch on what new technologies are incorporated in these type of products and what that technology can allow us to do. So that's kind of a high level of what we're going to get into today. And uh, moving forward, we'll, we'll jump into it. So what is backup protection? For me, backup protection is a form of protection utilized to prevent potential property damage as a result of rising liquid levels. Again, backup protection is, is much more than just sump pump related or sump pump backup. We're looking at all different scenarios here and trying to uh, mitigate any potential property damage and or system downtime um, that could be associated with, with maybe a, a pump down or, or a high level alarm or something like that. So. Backup protection can be found in several different forms. Uh, most commonly would be an alert or a notification of some sort or some sort of redundancy, whether that may be another switch or another pump or something like that. So those are kind of the, the two different forms of, of backup protection that will be found in a couple of our different products. So there's a lot of homeowners making an investment into their property and that property is worth protecting. A lot of homeowners don't know there are backup alarms and some sort of backup uh, devices that can alert them when they have an issue. So it's, it's about educating the homeowner, educating the contractor so that they know that they have something that is there and giving them the peace of mind to protect that property and to protect that investment that they're making in, into their basement. Again, just because they're finishing out a basement or a space, it's not always, I guess it's not always a basement, but any sort of investment or, or property damage. So when you think of power outages or if a pump failed, if you if you had a switch failure on a pump or a clogged or frozen 
discharge pipe. If you had, uh, if you're on a combined sewer and, and stormwater system, you risk some potential flooding issues there. So a lot of different scenarios can come into play where you will find yourself needing some sort of backup protection. And that's, again, what we're gonna kind of get in today. Okay, so we talked about who can benefit from backup protection. Number one would be the homeowner or end user of some sort. Again, homeowners are the ones making that upfront investment into their basement if we're talking about that. Facility maintenance providers. So say it's, it's more of a commercial type of application and you've got some facility maintenance guys that are monitoring you know, several different lift stations and they wanna be alerted when a pump station goes down or maybe it's just one of those pumps that go down. That way they have an idea of what's happening. They can get out there, pull that pump and repair or replace it before they actually have to shut the facility down. So those folks can certainly benefit from having some sort of uh, backup protection. And then service or mechanical contractors, depending on what's going on, these type of individuals, especially service contractors, if we're talking residential, you know, when, when a homeowner calls and they're wanting their pump replaced, it's most likely not on a shiny, you know, Sunday afternoon that just triggered their memory that maybe they should replace that pump. Typically, it's because that pump has failed and they have either uh, groundwater or effluent or sewage backing up into their home. If you're a contractor and you're listening, if I would always recommend to recommend to the homeowner some sort of backup protection. At that point in time, when you're visiting with them and, and you're making that call to replace that pump, you have their undivided attention and they certainly don't want to relive that experience again. So a contractor can certainly benefit from recommending a form of backup protection. It's gonna add more revenue to their bottom line. It's gonna increase the amount of uh, dollars on each service ticket and call that they're on. So those are certainly some folks that would benefit from recommending a form of backup protection to their customer. So the most simplistic form that we offer of some sort of backup protection would be a high water alarm. Again, high water alarms can be used in, in a variety of applications. It's not just sump or, or sewage. They can be used in effluent as well. Certainly, if you're a contractor listening, every time I was called out to do a pump, I would recommend, whether it's a sump, effluent, or sewage pump, I would recommend at a bare minimum offering a hot water alarm to your homeowner. This gives the uh, customer peace of mind, again, that their investment is protected, and it allows you to add more dollars into your service ticket or PO, which is increasing the revenue with each touch of the customer. So when we talk about high water alarms, we offer several different forms of that. The, again, the most simplistic would be our Aquanaut flood alert, which is what we're showing here. Uh, this is kind of our, again, our most basic form of protection. It operates on three AAA batteries and it utilizes it as a set of contacts that basically sense moisture when moisture is present on those contacts. So you have a five foot sensor cord going from that horn or bell there that will sound and let anyone around within earshot know that they have moisture somewhere. So this little unit can be mounted in a water heater pan. It can be mounted outside of a uh, condensate pump or in the condensate pan. It can be mounted under a sink or a toilet or lavatory, that kind of thing, or a floor drain. Again, just to let the homeowner know that there is water present wherever this thing is mounted. So this is the most simplistic thing, very cost effective. But should a homeowner or someone want to be notified of, that there is water present somewhere, this unit is available. Moving into one of our flagship products when it comes to high water alarms are our APAC alarms. Now, we do offer several different models that have different features and benefits. You'll see that we offer both indoor and outdoor units. Big difference here is the indoor unit is a NEMA 1, so basically that just means it's rated for indoor use. That would be the kind of the top left and the top right hand unit that you see here in, in the pictures. We also offer a NEMA 3R unit, which would be the unit that's the lower left picture there. Basically, NEMA R is saying it can prevent against falling rain, sleet, or ice. So this unit can be used outdoor. So it's both the indoor and outdoor type of application. You can use that. And we do offer some, some units that are NEMA 4X, which is 
uh, a little takes it a little bit further, which basically means that unit would be watertight, dust tight, erosion resistant, and it can protect against direct or, or prolonged hit from you know direct water. There are other instances that you'll hear of NEMA ratings. Typically, you'll see them more inside of a panel enclosure, which may be rated at NEMA 6P, which would mean it would protect against prolonged submerging. We don't really have a high water alarm unit that's rated currently at, at NEMA 6P. So those are the differences between our indoor and outdoor units. We do have different switch options. As you can see here, the pictures on the top left and the bottom left are both kind of the uh, mechanical swing out top style switch. And to the right, you have basically a reed style switch. We will get into that a little bit, but it seems like the market as a whole seems to accept that uh, mechanical swing out style switch for sewage applications and the reed style switch for sump applications. I will tell you that you can use both switches in both applications. The reed switch is often in the marketplace not used in sewage applications. Folks are concerned that you know you may have some toilet paper or debris that got caught on that little float and it may prevent it from going up or down. What I would say is that this high water alarm, that float is gonna always be up and out of the water or direct hit from sewage unless there's an issue. So if you had a pump failure, obviously that water level would rise and lift that float and turn that alarm on. Most times when that happens anyway, you're gonna have to pull the cover off that pit or something to look inside that pit to see what's going on. And at that time you could remove any debris that might be around that reed switch. So I hope that makes sense. The mechanical style switch can also be used in sump applications. However, kind of the, the disadvantage of that is that you've got to tether that switch off on the discharge pipe and you have to make sure that your sump pit has enough space for that float to come up without hitting up against the sidewall of the pit and not being able to fully turn that switch on. So just something to keep in mind with both those switch offerings. And actually, we'll kind of get into it a little bit later, but some of our units offer remote monitoring capability via our platform called Z-Control. So that's just something, again, to keep in mind, and we'll touch a little bit more on Z-Control and the benefits and what it can do for you and your customer moving forward. We kind of talked on it here a little bit. This is a kind of a diagram of a typical sump pump installation. You have your primary pump there at the bottom. That's a sketch of our, you know, our M53. You've got your discharge pipe going up. And if you notice there, in this application, this sketch, we have the reed switch mounted there. I did put a note there that notice that the switch on point, so you see the switch, the little wafer style switch there, the on point is actually lower than that of the inlet pipe or the French frame that's bringing the groundwater from around the home into the sump pit. That's very important that that is below. The reason being is, that water level is going to rise. It should turn on the primary pump. Let's say the primary pump has failed. That water level is going to rise. And at that point, it should lift that flow, allowing the homeowner to be notified that the primary pump has failed or it's not keeping up and that they have high water alarm going off. If you had that float switch up higher, basically we would be backfilling the perimeter of the home with water throughout that full pipe that surrounds the perimeter of the home. And we don't want to do that. We'd rather rectify that situation before that starts to happen. So make sure the on point is always below the inlet. Got another drawing here, which basically shows your typical sewage pump install. Again, same thing, using a high water alarm that's now using the mechanical style switch. Again, you see that tethered off there. That switch is tethered off lower than the inlet. So basically, when that switch turns on, that water level rises, that switch has got to get to just above parallel before it actually closes the contact and will sound the alarm. Again, we've got that mounted below the inlet pipe. If we weren't, we'd be backfilling the lowest fixture in the home. That inlet pipe would be filling up with sewage and let's say it's in a basement and you have a bathroom down there, more than likely your shower at some point would have sewage backing up into the shower if that alarm was mounted higher up in that pit. You definitely greatly increase your chances of getting sewer water in your shower and I don't think anybody wants that to happen. So again, something to keep in mind. And this is a typical drawing of a septic application. So your sewage would be coming in from the left-hand side. It comes into your septic tank. In the septic tank, all the solids start to settle out and you have your effluent water in the middle and then you have your scum layer at the top. That effluent water will typically 
travel through either a baffle or tea like this or a effluent filter before dumping over into the chamber that has your pump, which would be your dosing chamber. And then you would have your pump there. Again, if you notice the alarm again is installed lower than that of where the affluent water is coming in from. So again, installed lower than the inlet so that the homeowner would know that they have a high water situation before we start backfilling that septic tank with affluent water and ultimately back up into the, the residence. So again, just something to keep in mind on where those floats need to be installed moving forward when you put these in the applications. All right, so alarms are great if you're home, right? Or if you're around and you can hear them. But what if you're not home or you can't hear your alarm? The Z Control Cloud platform is going to become such an advantage to you and to your homeowner. Basically, what Z Control is, is a platform that we developed in house. That's probably been about roughly four to five years ago. Again, we developed it in-house as a form and a way for you and or the homeowner to be connected to their equipment at any time. So if it's a high water alarm and they're not home, they can be notified that they have high liquid level of some sort present in their pit, even if they're not home via a push notification, a text message, or an email. Again, allows for both testing and diagnostics of the equipment, helps prevent property damage. Again, early knowledge. It's all about being proactive instead of reactive to the situation. And on a lot of these applications, you're going to receive reminders for maintenance. The notifications you're going to get are through text, email, or push, and allows you some real-time troubleshooting as well. One nice thing about it is, so depending on the type of product that you have, let's say it's a high water alarm, you may just be able to remotely silence that high water alarm because there's not a lot you can do with the high water alarm. You'll get the notification and then you can silence it from your phone. But in some applications or in some products, it's more than just a high water alarm. You'll be able to actually two-way communicate with your product. Now, what that means is, let's say you're on vacation and you want to know that your pump system is going to work. In some of our products, you can remotely from your phone activate your device and it will run. It'll self-test itself and send you that data back, letting you know that all systems are go or that you have an issue. So again, that's part of the being proactive instead of reactive approach. There's a number of ways that we can monitor that. The contractor can do that or the homeowner, and we'll get into that a little bit later on, but the two-way communication is key and what we feel is vital to, again, don't wanna reiterate it, but being proactive instead of reactive. And it offers a tool that quite frankly, none of our competitors are doing yet. Some of our competitors have where you can get a push or text or email notification that there is a problem, but their platforms do not allow you to actually have two-way communication to the equipment where our unit does allow us to be able to do that, which is huge. Kind of going to the next, this is just kind of a screenshot of what our website or our mobile app looks like. Again, all devices from the homeowner can be shared with their contractor. So there's gonna be, some contractors that really embrace that, that really like that. There's also going to be some customers out there, quite frankly, that you don't want to be married to that application. You just kind of know who those customers are. You're probably thinking about some of them right now, as I mentioned that. So, but what the homeowner can do is they can monitor these devices themselves, or they can decide to share them with the contractor. And then the contractor at that point decides whether they want to monitor that for their homeowner or whether they don't want to monitor that. So when you're thinking about that, if I'm a contractor and it's something that I do want to do, I can now charge a monthly monitoring fee and I can monitor Ms. Smith's home or Mr. Jones's home and several different pieces of equipment if I would like to. What that does is that allows me to kind of own that job. It allows me to ensure that I get that repetitive business. So if there is an alarm or something that happens to one of these products, I'm called to go back out there to work on it. So I do get that repetitive business. I'm also making that monthly service dollars or monies on monitoring the equipment. So there's a couple of different forms of revenue possibly in there for the contractor. Not only that is depending on the equipment, you may be able to set and say, hey, I want to be notified when this pump hits X number of cycles or when the battery is you know, three years old, if it's a battery backup system. 
So even without having something fail, you're able to get in and kind of uh, do a preventive maintenance program for your homeowner or for your customer. And again, get that repetitive business. So as you can see, kind of on the left-hand side is a snapshot of our website. You'll see the top location is Fisherville Homes and the bottom location is Product Support. So those would be like the names of your homeowner or the names of the lift station or whatever it is that you're monitoring there. And then inside of that, you would have different tiles. Those tiles are different types of equipment. So you have like the first one's an Aquanaut 508 Fit under Fisherville Home. That is one of our battery backup systems. The next one is the APAC indoor alarm. We kind of went over alarms a little bit ago, but if you notice, there's four different green check marks there. One just notifying that the AC power is on, the battery's good in that alarm, and there's an input one and an input two. Typically on those high water alarms that are Z control enabled, input one is gonna be your float switch, which is gonna tell you whatever you're trying to look for. There is a secondary input on that high water alarm that will allow you to hook up another switch. So if you wanna drop another switch in a water heater pan, maybe you're monitoring both the sump and sewage pit, you can name those inputs in our device. So input one may be labeled sump pit, input two may be labeled sewage pit, that type of thing. So you do have the ability to do that as well. But you can put a number of different tiles in there, which is more or less pieces of equipment that you're monitoring for each homeowner or each lift station or, or whatever it is that you're, you're providing that support to. So again, we think this is a huge tool. One nice thing is that we realize that not all contractors are going to be comfortable with this type of technology. If you're a contractor that's not comfortable with this technology or just don't understand it at this point in time, all of these products do install similarly as far as when we're talking about just the basics of mounting a high water alarm or the basics of installing a battery backup pump. You don't have to do anything special to install these products. If you installed the battery backup pump and you didn't, maybe you just fully don't understand this technology, you can turn that over to the homeowner and the homeowner can connect their device to their phone or to their smart device or tablet or whatever they want to do there. So that's that's not on you to be the expert when it comes to this type of technology. So just wanted to let you know that. All right, so that brings us into the next product we want to touch on, which is our water power backup system. This is a product that we recently released, uh, I'm going to say roughly a year ago, which is our model 540 Flex. Again, this is going to be strictly for sump pump type of applications. For you folks in the South, just bear with us and we'll get into a little bit more if you don't have a sump type application. So with the 540 Flex, again, obviously no electricity is required, powered by, we want to make sure that you have city water pressure if you are going to be using this unit. If you're running off of a well system, obviously you've got to have power to turn that well pump on. So the power was out, you obviously wouldn't have power if that well pump not providing pressure to the home. So want to make sure that you have city water pressure and that it does utilize a three quarter inch supply line to feed this unit. The suction pipe, what we're talking about here is the pipe that actually goes down into the sump pit. That's the portion that's going to be pulling the water out of the sump. It is available to be adaptable with inch and a quarter or inch and a half suction pipe. So if you've got inch and a half pipe on your truck or your van, you can go ahead and use that with this unit as well. It removes two gallons for every gallon used. What I will tell you is this unit kind of works on a sweet spots anywhere from 40 to 80 PSI. So as long as you have, you know, have that pressure in the home, 60 PSI, 10 foot ahead is going to give you roughly 19 gallons per minute of water discharge out of that pit. At 80 PSI, at 10 foot ahead, you're going to get roughly 20 gallons per minute removed from that pit. So just know that that's the performance and, and those are kind of the pressures you want to see. Anything over 80 PSI, you kind of risk damaging the diaphragm and some other things to the system. So that's kind of where we cut off is the 80 PSI is where we recommend. This unit does utilize a diaphragm and a water tube. What I mean by that is what is feeding that switch is a water tube so that you are going to have some water spit out of that back into the pit when that switch comes up. Again, that's the way the, the diaphragm works there. The good thing about that is there is no moving rod. 
So a lot of our competitors have a rod that has to go up and down, like a traditional float. A float lifts and the rod moves up and down to turn the pump on. So their, their pump is outside of the pit and that rod has got to go through the cover. Well, when you start thinking about sealing up a sump pit, especially like radon type of applications, if you've got a mechanical rod that has to go through that cover, there's no real good way to seal that up because you're going to impede the up and down movement of that float rod if you try to do so. So you can't really use it in a radon type of application. With our unit, it would allow you to be able to use it in a radon type of application because you can mount that switch down inside of that pit and you basically have a water tube that can be mounted through the cover and then sealed up as it doesn't have to move up and down mechanically. So again, our unit can be utilized in radon type of applications where our competitors cannot. So it's not called the flex for just because. This unit can be installed in two different ways, thus being flexible in the installation. You can put it in the horizontal insulation, which is kind of what I recommend and what I like. It's just a cleaner fit. That way you keep your three quarter inch water supply line up in the Either you call it the floor joist or you can call it the, the ceiling rafters, but it keeps that water supply line up there and secured. That's the cleanest type of install, in my opinion. It can be flipped into the vertical and be put lower down towards the pit. If this unit's in a mechanical room, that might be okay, but again, you risk, like I have small children at home that seem to break everything. If your children run around the basement or somebody trips over that supply line, you could break that supply line. You could be looking at a lot of water dumping into your basement there off of that. So again, the way it's situated allows us to install this unit both horizontally and secure that supply line up into the rafter, or we can drop it down vertically and do it there as well. So a couple different ways you can install that. One thing I do want to make note of, we talked about high water alarms before. This is a unit that I would strongly, again, strongly recommend advising installing a high water alarm with this type of system. The reason being, so say the water level, like in this picture, the water level rises, it lifts the float up for your sump pump, but the primary sump pump does not turn on. The water level continues to rise. It lifts the float for your water power pump. In order for this pump to run, we are supplying one gallon of potable or city water to this unit. This unit works off a Venturi device. So as you're pumping one gallon through this thing, you're pulling two gallons out of the pit. So if you did not know that this unit was working, say, say it wasn't a power outage, say your primary pump just failed, and now this unit is the only unit working, you are not going to know it's working until two months from now, you get your water bill, and your water bill is astronomically high. No one wants to see that, so I would recommend putting a high water alarm switch, even with that of this water powered backup switch so that the homeowner is alerted that, hey, something's going on. My water power backup pump is running. Something's wrong with my primary pump. They can call you and get you to come out there and take a look at it before you know, they get a couple thousand dollar water bill. So uh, just something to keep in mind. Again, strongly encourage you to install a high water alarm when installing a water power backup pump. Whether that's our pump or whether that's someone else's pump, I would always recommend installing a high water alarm in conjunction with this unit. All right, with that being said, we're going to jump into the battery backup units. That seems to be what's sold mostly through the pole here. Again, your typical system, battery backup system is going to come with a DC pump, a charger, a switch, and a battery box. I would make note, this is a charger that is going to be inside someone's residence and home. I would make sure to verify that whatever system you are buying is UL or CSA approved, which is third party approval on that unit. Again, it's just safe. This thing is putting out volts to a battery. You just want to make sure that everything's third party approved there. One thing to note, so the highest pump you see in the picture is the DC pump. We do build that pump here. We have a plastics injection molding company in Boonville, Indiana that Zoller owns. So we make that pump right there, build it right there. It's 100% tested right there, just like every one of our products that come off our assembly line. We don't outsource this pump from overseas from anyone. It follows the same sort of QC protocol that any one of our primary pumps does. 
you notice at the top of that pump, there's a white test plug. We use that plug. Basically what we do is we put a certain amount of PSI into the cavity of that pump. We submerge that pump. We verify that there's no air leaks either internally or externally so that we can verify that when that pump comes out of the box into the contractor's hands, it's gonna work every time. Again, we also make sure that every one of these pumps meets our published curve. So if we say it's gonna do 30 gallons a minute at a certain foot ahead, we make sure it does that and exceeds that before getting that pump out to the contractor. So again, just wanna make sure you know we don't cut corners when it comes to our DC battery backup pump offering. It is something that we have complete control over. All of these pumps, again, these pumps can be mounted like you see here, which is what we call our ProPack system. So that is the DC pump that's kind of teed in in conjunction with the primary pump. You can buy it like that, or you can buy it separate where it's just the DC pump. One thing to note is that the black portion of that pump that you're seeing there, which is the DC pump, it does have feet on it. I know these pits are getting smaller and smaller. In a perfect world, if you have the space available, I would recommend if you're gonna sell or if you're buying the DC pump separate, setting that pump on the bottom of the pit. The nice thing about that is now I can have a separate discharge pipe for my DC backup pump. They might ask, why would I wanna have that? Well, let's say your primary pump discharge pipe becomes clogged. Now your primary pump's not pumping anything out of it. Let's say it's uh, you live in a cold refinement and maybe that pipe is frozen. So now you're not pumping anything out of your primary pump. It's turning on and it's running, but it's not pumping anything. That water level rises. It turns on your battery backup pump. Your battery backup pump, if teed into that same primary pump, can't pump either. If it's got its own separate discharge pipe, you're kind of offering some redundant backup protection there so that you're able to pump out that water away from the residence. So just something to keep in mind. I know a lot of home builders now, they're putting in very small pits. It's often hard just to get a primary pump in there. So just something to keep in mind. So our flagship products at Zoller Company are our Aquanaut series. Kind of the first one to go over is our Aquanaut Spin 508. This unit is, again, is going to deliver you 35 gallons per minute at 10 foot ahead. So quite a bit more than the water-powered unit. Basically, what happens is you're not going to lose any performance. So if you have an M53 that's going to give you roughly 35 gallons per minute at 10 foot ahead, and you say you have a power outage, what's typically involved with a power outage? Typically, it's you know high winds, thunderstorms, which involve rain. So if you have an active pit that's typically turning on and off quite frequently, and you have a storm of some sort that knocks out your power, the last thing you want to be doing is getting half the performance you know, via a water power pump or one of our competitors' uh, DC pumps. You want to make sure you're getting that same performance that you would be getting if you had power to your primary pump. So that's what this pump allows for. Again, built in Indiana in the Zoller owned facility and 100% tested. The unit can run for five and a half hours continuously or several days based on 10% duty cycle. So we have no way of really telling every pit's different, every application's a little different. All we can test for is continuous run. So again, we can tell you that if we lift that switch up and off of a fully charged 12 volt battery, it's gonna run for five and a half hours. You know, it's on and off, you know, three, five times an hour. It's going to obviously increase the amount of time that that battery is going to hold the charge. So it could be several days, depending on how many on and offs you have going on there and how hard that pump's working. So the biggest knock on battery backup pumps for years has been that a battery backup pump sits there and, you know, it could sit there three, five, ten years. Who knows? The homeowner is probably, most likely not going to be calling you and or going down them themselves and lifting the float to make sure that it's you know, running or, or monitoring the battery and, and replacing it when need be, that's typically not going to happen. So what would happen was they would lose power and, you know, it's five, six years later and that pump hasn't ran at all. And then when the float comes up, either the battery's dead or the pump is actually seized up because it's never turned. Our units are different. With our Aquanaut Spin, which is kind of our entry level, you know, Aquanaut series pump, it now self-tests itself every 24 hours. That means it's never lying dormant. It's always going to be moving. Thus, we call it the spin. This unit, again, it'll self-test itself every 24 hours, and you have control of that. So when it's installed, 
you'd hit the test button. So say you installed at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday at 2 p.m., it's going to self-test itself. If you or the homeowner wants it done at a different time, if you want it done at midnight, you just got to go down there and hit the test button at midnight, and that restarts that clock. So you kind of can have control over when you want that thing to self-test itself. Now then, if it self-tests itself and it doesn't do what it's supposed to, it will sound an audio alarm letting the homeowner know that there is an issue there with the system. So they will have some sort of alert to let them know that, hey, my system self-tests itself and something's wrong. Another nice thing about our systems are that we actually supervise the switch. And what do I mean by that? So that black switch is a vertical master switch and it plugs into the controller. Both the pump and the switch have a plug ad plug in adapter, so you can't hook them up to the wrong spot on the charger, which is kind of nice. But what I mean by its switch supervision is that that switch is a typically closed switch, so that we're always monitoring it. When that switch goes up, um, it opens it up and uh, obviously turns the pump on, but if that switch were to come, again, I mentioned my children in a couple slides ago, and talking about how they're always turning something up. If the switch come unplugged or something like that, because it is a normally closed switch, we are always monitoring it. The homeowner will get a notification that, hey, something's going on, an alarm will sound, and then there will be a, a light illuminate that they have a float switch fault so that they'll be able to diagnose what's going on with the system. They can plug that switch back up and, and they'd be up and running. So again, we're always monitoring the switches. Not everybody's doing that. A lot of times when the switch hooks up, if that switch were to, let's say, uh, have bad connection or a loose connection, the system doesn't see that. So there'd be no way to turn that pump on or off. With our system, we always monitor that switch. Again, the DC pump does have feet, so you would be able to set that pump down at the bottom and run a separate discharge pipe if you choose to do so. And these units can be ordered by themselves or in a prepackaged system, which we call the ProPack, with a number of different primary pumps, just depending on the primary pump that you like. So the alerts that you get with this unit, which would be audio alerts and or the LED flashing lights on the charger, would be a bad battery, a pump activation, a switch fault, continuous run. So if that system, say that switch got stuck in the on position, that pump just continued to run, it will let the homeowner know via both an audio and a visual with a flashing LED uh, that it's continually running and or air locked. So air locked, I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with that, but basically at some point in time, if you've installed some submersible centrifugal pumps, you've probably encountered it where you've gotten to a pump the water level was high. You knew that you could feel the discharge pipe was, but you know, like vibrating. So you could tell the pump was running, but it just wasn't pumping any water. A lot of times, what that is known as air locked. What will happen is you will get a pocket of air above the impeller of your primary pump, or like this one, maybe it's your DC pump. You'll get a pocket of air between that and the check valve. What happens is that pocket of air has no way to escape that pocket of air is going to hold there. I often refer to this as, you know, if you have a straw and a cup of water, if you put your finger on top of the straw and then put it down in the water, no water will actually get up into that straw because there's a pocket of air in that straw that will not allow water to get into it. Similar to kind of what people refer to as priming a system, uh, that's what takes place. Yes, the pump will run. No, it won't pump any water. So if that's the case and this pump is running, what happens is typically an airlock is that impeller spinning, but it's got a pocket of air around it. So it does sense a load on it to that of actual water being around it. So most times it's pulling about half the amperage of what it would be if you had water around it. So the, the pump can see that it knows it's pulling a lot less amps and it is going to sound alarm and an LED letting you know that the system is airlocked. So it does have that notification on as well. So again, Again, we've tried really hard to think about everything that can happen, you know, kind of the, the law there, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So we've tried to really think about that and incorporate all those scenarios into our backup systems. The next unit we want to talk about is our Aquanaut Fit 508. Again, this unit delivers 35 gallons per minute. It's input ahead, similar to that of the last unit, as it is the same DC pump. It is built Again, in Indiana at a Zoller owned facility and 100% tested just like the rest of our products. Again, has the same amount of runtime and 
self-test itself every 24 hours. There's a couple of different features this thing has. Again, it has switch supervision like our other unit. However, this unit comes with a secondary switch, which is the read switch. This switch acts as a redundant switch. So say your DC pump, the vertical master switch were to lift and it didn't turn the pump on, the water level continued to rise, it would lift the read switch, obviously sound an alarm, an audio and visual alarm, and turn that pump on. So you do have secondary switch supervision that will act as a redundant switch. This unit is also Wi-Fi enabled via the Z-Control platform we talked about before. So you would get not only an audible and visual alarm, you would get a push or text or email notification sent to your phone. Now that would be depending on how you want that notification. If you wanted a push notification, we certainly do that, or text, we can do that as well, or, or email. So that's something to keep in mind. That secondary switch also does something that's neat and in, into this unit is another feature we built in, which is called boost mode. So when that water level was to, were to rise and lift the vertical master switch up, if it did not turn the pump on or the pump was struggling to keep up, the pump spinning, the water level continues to rise, it lifts that reed switch. Boost mode allows the pump to pull more voltage from the battery, thus increasing the performance of that pump. So now we're going to increase that pump performance by 10% to help alleviate that high water condition and pump that pit down. Once that float drops back down, the pump will reset at that point in time and you it go back to pulling the normal voltage from the battery and give you back the 35 GPM 10 foot ahead that it was previously doing. So that is a nice feature that this unit has. Again, this unit is also Z control enabled. So all those alerts that you may get, whether it's a float fault or pump activation, continuous run, all that stuff's gonna be sent to you via push text or email notification. Another thing this unit has got, if, if it senses the pump is airlocked, it will turn itself on and off a period of times in order to purge that air from the system. So more or less, it is a self-priming feature of this pump to get rid or displace that air so that that pump will pull in water. Uh, again, you will get notified, but that unit will do that in order to purge that system so that the pump will, in fact, pump the water out of the pit. So something to keep in mind again, a couple of nice features to that Aquanaut Fit, which is kind of our premium type of battery backup offering that we offer right now. Those are some features that any of our competition aren't currently offering. This is just kind of a sketch of a typical install. And this is one that's a ProPack system. Notice that the battery backup switch, the on point of it is higher than that of the primary pump. So if you're going to set the switch yourself, you'll need to make sure you're cognizant of that. You don't want your battery backup pump turning on before or at the same time as your primary pump. So make sure it's higher than that. If you buy the ProPack system from us, that's all set from the factory and you don't have to worry about it. The high water sensor, again, in a perfect world, you would be able to mount that lower than that of your inlet pipe. I do understand that the pits are a lot smaller today than they were you know, in years past, and maybe that's not always a viable option, but we certainly like to get it as close to just below that inlet pipe as possible. So just something to keep in mind there. All right, now getting into duplex systems. The benefit of a duplex system versus simplex. So simplex system is, is quite simply, when we say simplex, we just mean one pump. A duplex system, we mean two pumps. Duplex systems can be offered in a variety of different ways. Residentially, we would utilize most times our Smart Pack Plus, which is on the left, and kind of more of a commercially, but not always, maybe some residents, but commercially or in, in larger applications, we'd recommend a full-on control panel which we'll kind of get into a little bit. And that may look familiar. I know a little while back, we had another gentleman get on here and, and had a webinar regarding panels and panel training. So some of this may look a little bit familiar to you, but we'll get into it here now. So our Smart Pack Plus residential alternator. This unit can be used with both sewage and or sump applications. So in a sump application, if you have a really active pit, there's some parts of the world, you know, Nowadays, they're putting neighborhoods anywhere, what used to be farmland uh, that has a lot of drain tile in it. A lot of residential neighborhoods are going up there. Because of that, a lot of times we get calls from homeowners. It's not uncommon for pumps to run every 60 seconds. 
And that's not necessarily even in a catastrophic rain event. That's just what they're seeing every day as a pump running every 60 seconds. You know, that can be quite troublesome for somebody that's just bought a new home with that type of application. Sometimes in those applications, they're wanting to put in, maybe they want to put in two pits with a pipe that joins the two pits. Maybe they put in one large pit and put two pumps down in it, and they use this type of controller in order to split the load of the pumps. And what I mean by that is this controller, you're going to plug your both pumps in, so pump one and pump two, where you see those green arrows, and then your switches are going to come up. We'll kind of get into this in the next slide, but basically this unit will allow the pumps to alternate, therefore splitting the wear and tear across two different pumps extends the life of each pump. This box is designed for human type of areas, such as in crawl spaces and basements. It is NEMA 1 rated, so I wouldn't necessarily put it outside where it's going to get rained on, but in a crawl space, it would do just fine there. It does have a set of dry contacts that allow for remote monitoring. So if you're looking at that picture, the controller, you have a set of contacts at the bottom right where the switch is at, and then you have a set of contacts at the top right. Those would be the dry contacts, and you can run that out to, let's say, a high water alarm so that you'll be notified when you get a high water condition on whatever this is hooked to. So whether it's a two sump pumps or two sewage pumps, you would be notified that you have an issue there. So there is the possibility of doing that. It does have a built-in high water alarm. We're using that reed switch on this unit to turn on and off depending on the liquid level you have there, whether it's sump or sewage. And then the alerts you're gonna get are high water, loss of power, continuous run, breaker trip and pump failure. You do get a loss of power notification alarm because there is a rechargeable battery built into that unit. So when it's typically plugged up and you have power, it's going to be charging the battery, letting you know. If you were to lose power, you still have that notification, like if a breaker trip or something like that, you would still have that notification that you have an issue downstairs or wherever this system is located. So you would get that notification too. Now then, we recommend the system to be installed with two automatic style pumps. It can be installed with two pumps that utilize different style switches. So maybe it's a vertical master switches. Maybe it's the swing out mechanical style switch. The important thing to know and be cognizant of, you need to make sure that that switch, whatever switches you're using to, to uh, power your primary pump, that they are installed at the exact same height and turn on at the exact same height. That is important for this unit. So if you use a different style switch, just be cognizant of that. This is a typical sketch of that system. The water level would rise, lift both floats up on both pumps. Pump one would be energized. The water level would drop back down. The water level would rise. It would, at that point in time, it would flip over and pump two would be energized and pump the water level down. That's how that unit works. If pump one's turn was to run and the water level came up, and it, both switches were lifted, pump one didn't come on, it would lift up that high water alarm sound an alarm and it would fire pump two. Pump two would then turn on and run. Once again, pump once time again, you would get another alarm. So you would be notified every time and you would be able to know which pump is failed so that you can check that. And moving right along, let's see, duplex panels. So these units would be used in commercial, again, not always, some residential applications. A duplex panel has the same benefits as a simplex panel, but allows for both pumps to operate at the same time. Where the Smart Pack Plus residential alarm we talked about earlier, it doesn't allow for both pumps to kick on at the same time. It can't handle the load of both pumps. A duplex panel can, so both pumps could fire at the same time, which gives you additional performance to maybe you've got a high water situation, one pump can't keep up, so it will allow for additional performance. Again, allows for less wear and tear. On each pump, you're kind of switching the load across the pumps so that you're extending the life on those pumps. It also allows for redundancy if one pump were, were to go down. Again, if you're in a situation where maybe it's a school, a nursing home, a hospital, restaurant, if you do not have the time to shut your facilities down and you can't conduct business while doing that, I would strongly recommend using a duplex system a two pump system at minimum. Simplex system, if you get the notification that you've got a high water, that's great. If the pump's down, you've got to pull the pump, have it repaired and or replace it and 
during that time, you've got to shut your entire facility down. That means you're not, you know, there's no running water that you're going to be using at the facility. So if you're depending on running water or vacuum facilities or things like that, I would always strongly recommend using a duplex system. A little more added upfront cost, but the upfront cost will say, I mean, if you don't have to shut your business down for a day or two, definitely helps. So uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, some of our pumps and panels are equipped with moisture detection sensors. So what that means, depending on the pump you get, some of our pumps will put a 330K ohm resistor in the cap of the pump and just above the mechanical seal. What that allows us to do is detect if any moisture is present. So if you were to lose a seal, we would be able to notify you via a light on the front of that control panel that, hey, water has entered, has bypassed the mechanical seal or gotten into the cap of the pump. The pump can still run currently, but that pump probably needs to be pulled and serviced and then put back in. So you're getting notified before the pump actually ever goes down. So if you have a duplex system, then your other pump would continually run while you were able to pull that pump, get it repaired, and put back in the system. So just something you know, again, that'll be predicated on the type of pump uh, that you are using. Did want to just touch on the pour float operation of a duplex panel. This is my favorite setup. There's a number of different ways you can do this, but just kind of walk through how that works. Again, this may look familiar to some of you all that sat in on our last webinar. Basically, you have pump one and pump two. The gray area there is what we would consider the wastewater. So you have your stop float, which is your lowest float, your lead float, your alarm float, and then your lag. That's how we would recommend doing a four float operation. So the water level rises, it lifts your stop float, it continues to rise, it lifts your lead float. At that point in time, pump one is on, it's fired up and it's running. It's gonna pump the water level down until the stop float drops all the way out. So the lead float fell down, but the pump continues to run until the stop float falls out of the system and then it shuts the pump down. The next time the water level will rise, it rises the stop float, nothing happens. It then rises the lead float. Pump two is fired. Now pump two is pumping, and it's gonna pump the water level down. Lead float drops back out, stop float drops out, pump two shuts off. Now let's say you're in a situation where, where the water level rises, lifts the stop, it lifts the lead, now it lifts the alarm. So now whoever's around, or if you're remote monitoring it via Z control, someone's getting a notification somewhere that, hey, I've got a high water scenario going on. One of my pumps is down or it's not keeping up. Something's going on. I need to take a look at it. So that alarm sounds. If that water level keeps rising, which it should, if people are using the facility, the lag float is then flipped up and pump two comes on, pumping the system down. A lot of times in the field, you will see these get wired up as the stop float being the lowest, the lead float being the next one, the lag float being the next one, and then the alarm being at the top. The problem with that is, is if you do it that way, yes, it will work. You will alternate between the pumps and split the life and all that. But by the time you get the alarm notification, you have two bad pumps that need to be pulled, serviced, and or replaced. So I always recommend installing these stop, lead, alarm, lag in that order so that we're able to get the notification that you have an issue before both pumps are down. So that's kind of what we're covering today on our backup systems overview and protection webinar. If you have any questions, please be sure to email them at webinars at zoller.com and we will be sure to address those moving forward and get back with you. One thing I did want to let you all know, there are some handouts available for some of the products that we went over that you can download. So be sure to download those before you go if you'd like them. Again, certainly appreciate all of you for joining us today. Thank you for your participation and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.